Hi, Carolina. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us and sparing some time for us. Um, lots to talk about uh, with Snapping. But so Snap Snapping described itself as a, a camera company, and you said that if a business isn't building a camera strategy, they're not building uh, a business for the future. So can you break down what that means a little bit, and, and especially in terms of how you see consumer behavior shifting and, and why you know the camera is so central to that? Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Snap, we call ourselves a camera company, and I think that you know the world's understanding and definition of the camera actually needs to shift. A lot of people still think of the camera as this you know device, this piece of hardware to capture a moment, uh, to capture an image or a video. But the camera is so much more than that. And when we talk about why this is so necessary, you know, if you look at the past 30 years as an example of, you know, the need for businesses to adapt, you see it quite clearly. You look at the emergence of Web 2.0, you know, businesses that didn't adopt and adapt to Web, creating an online presence, you know, didn't survive that shift. The next shift of social media was also another incredibly important shift for businesses to try to understand and become a part of because that's where people were spending their time. The huge shift to mobile have, has obviously provided another critically important shift in consumer behavior that businesses had to adapt to. It's not that technology you know, begets business change. It's that consumer behavior shifts as a result of technology advancements, that's what requires businesses to adapt. And there's actually another shift upon us. And that's the shift from going from just your mobile screen and your computer screen for how you interface with digital content to using the camera. The camera is a part of people's daily lives now in a way that it never was previously. And this is especially true for the Gen Z and the young millennial generation. And since Snapchat reaches 90% of the 13 to 24 year olds uh, in the UK, you know, this is something that we see at such a large scale. Billions of photos and videos are taken daily. 75% of these you know, people are actually not just taking a photo, they're interacting with augmented reality in the camera. And so this shift to using the camera every day, this isn't something of the future. It's already there. It's already happening with Gen Zs and young millennials. And that's only growing. 75% are using it already on Snapchat every day, but it's expected that 75% of the world's population is engaging actively with AR regularly over the next four to five years. And so as a business, you have to look at the facts. You have to look at where consumer behavior is shifting and adapt your business to meet people where they are. And that's what we mean by Snap is a camera company. We're not a picture taking company, company, we're a camera company, which can do so much more than take photos. It can understand what's in front of you. It can overlay computing over the physical world in front of you. And for a business, you know, they really have to start investing in the camera to future proof how they need to engage with these people. And more than that, it's not just about reach, it's also about impact. And that's what I think is exciting is we're seeing incredible ways that the camera and augmented reality is actually helping grow businesses in a very impactful fashion. And, so, and Snap is, is innovating at, at an incredible pace uh, on a lot of fronts, but especially on the retail um, and e-commerce side. And it's kind of hard to keep up, but we'll just try and outline some of those innovations. Uh, I mean, earlier this year, you launched ScreenShop, uh, which I've seen described as a kind of Shazam for clothes. Um, you may disagree, but can you talk talk about a little bit about what Screenshop does? Yeah, I you know I think that's a it's a cool way to describe it as Shazam for for clothing. But you know when when we look at the experience for being inspired by what you like and what you want to shop, there is sometimes a lot of friction in seeing what you like in real life and being able to go and find those items. And the camera helps to solve that friction. You know, if you're just going to use text to try to search for an item that you saw black sweater, <laughs> good luck with finding a result that's actually going to be exactly what you wanted. But the camera allows you to understand and visually search what's in front of you. And that's what Screenshop does on Snapchat. 
it provides this natural way for Snapchatters to point to their friends' outfits um, or even items that they're seeing in a store and find similar results to be able to shop those. And while they can do it in real life, pointing to a friend, they can also even scan items that they might have saved to their camera roll or even images in their camera roll um, that from different events, let's just say that they loved what their friend was wearing. And so that's what ScreenShop does. It says, hey, this is what's happening in real life. Uh, how can we use the camera and visual search and all these new technologies to take the power of the content that's online and really meet you where you are and where you're being inspired? And then what takes the, the, the shopping experience once, once you've um, kind of found the things you want is this into to another level is this integration of ar and and um, particularly the way that ar kind of automatically or, the, or what you're doing with AR automatically fits with whatever product product category you're searching in at that particular time um so yeah just talk about the way ar kind of uh, lifts that experience Look, augmented reality is really exciting within shopping in particular um it's exciting because it helps to solve additional challenges that people face while shopping. One of the biggest friction points for people uh, when shopping in line is, is fit and size and try on. You know, that's what they love about the in-store experience. And we actually have conducted a recent future of shopping study and we found some really interesting insights that help to prove a lot of these things. Firstly, it's not true that people don't want to come back to store. Uh, people do want to come back to store. Uh, you know, 50% of them are saying that one of the reasons is because they miss the social aspect. Another 50% are saying that it's actually because of this friction of trying on. And augmented reality and this idea of being able to virtually try on products really helps solve that. And it's important for businesses because about 30 to 50% return rate happens online. Compare that to a five to 10% return rate in store. That's a big impact on your bottom line. So the power to actually virtually try on products is really exciting. And I think what's important for businesses to realize though, is that this isn't just gonna help solve this problem of you know, return rates, which can be a very big impact on you know, the, the revenues that they're making, but it's also something that's becoming an expectation from shoppers. We're seeing that one in four shoppers are saying that they prefer to try clothes on virtually than go in the store. And that's an important, important understanding of what do your consumers want? How do you elevate that experience? Um, and how do you really meet them with their expectations? And AR allows you to do that. We're investing quite heavily at Snap on the range of technology to enable virtual try-on and product visualization. Over the last couple of years, we have launched the ability to try on sneakers by pointing to your feet and seeing those shoes on your feet. We have recently launched the ability to actually point to your wrist to try on jewelry. You can try on eyewear. When you're trying on eyewear, it's actually detecting the size of the frames relative to the size of your face so that it's accurate. You can try on makeup. Uh, you can see bags in AR and 3D. You can explore cars. And we're also investing in apparel quite heavily, which is a very difficult category to crack. You have to be able to map someone's body shape very accurately with 3D body mesh. You have to be able to simulate how that cloth is supposed to move and interact with things like gravity or your body's movement, uh, because this is not a, a real dress. This is a virtual one that you're trying on. And all of those pieces of technology we're really investing in launching for businesses so that they can enable try on across all of these categories and bring them not just to Snapchatters because they're such an active camera and AR audience, but even be able to bring those same try-on experiences to their own apps or websites through new features that we're enabling that allows offline usage of our tech um, in a retailer's app or site. But, um, but you can make that virtual try-on experience social as well. I mean, you, you friend, it's an, an experience that can be shared with friends and, you know, which, which adds this whole other level of engagement. Totally. Yeah, totally. I think that's why it's so powerful is because you're not building content that someone just consumes. You're building content that someone is immersed in and that is an experience that because it's built into the camera, they can so easily take a photo or do a recording and send that to their friends. 
And that's what we're seeing on Snapchat. It's such a massive scale. You know, people talk a lot about social commerce. Social commerce is built in to AR try-on because it's built into the camera. And so this flywheel of having people try on your products and then have them be a catalyst to be advocates for your brand because they're then sharing that with their friends for advice. You know, do you like this item or this item? Their friend in response is not only seeing that their friend is shopping your brand, which has a big impact on their preferences. Actually, close friends are the number one influencers on purchase decisions for Gen Z. Uh, but more than that, they, their friends can now directly try on your products and shop them as well. And so you're turning your everyday customers into advocates for your brands and this idea of, of almost micro influencers because it's the people you actually trust most. And that's, I think, quite exciting to think about the downstream effects of putting out content that people create with rather than just content that someone consumes that you're hoping they find relevant or inspiring. You know, is that model wearing that piece of clothing going to inspire that person to buy? Well, guess what? That model might not be relatable to me. Uh, perhaps we have a very different body type or a different style, but me being able to try it on myself and me being able to see it on my close friends, now that's an entirely different level of personalization and influence that a business can try to drive. And we're actually really seeing that pan out for businesses in terms of business results. You know, recent campaigns continuously prove the ability for this to drive a business growth. You know, Dior is a great example with their recent try on experience that they built. They're seeing over a 6.2x return on their ad spend. So every dollar that they spend to promote this AR try on experience, they're seeing over $6 back in transactions driven by people being interacting with that which is huge. And, and that reach is huge as well. Gucci is reaching nearly 20 million people who are trying on their products in AR. And another example is American Eagle, which actually, actually drove over $2 million in incremental sales because of people's ability to virtually shop their store from home. So it's working is what I kind of, I mean to say, and I think it has a lot of opportunities for growth for a business. One, one, one last one. Um, and I'm going to put this in, in, in kind of a crude way, but I think you said, you know, Snapchat hasn't been in the attention business. It's It's been about providing a space where, uh, you know, relatively small groups of friends and family come together. It's, it's that kind of space. And so you have to be very careful about what other content gets gets thrown into that space and how people um, see it, if, that, if you think that's a, a fair way of putting it. So it, how are you thinking about how you add commerce in that space that, that feels, you know, comfortable and true and sticks with that kind of model? You know, for us, commerce feels like a natural fit because of the very things that make up Snapchat, which you're referencing some of them. You know, one of the most important things about how we've built Snapchat is to create a very safe environment, one that you feel very natural in because you don't feel like you're being judged uh, because you're talking to your close friends uh, because you don't have things like, you know, likes on your kind of personal content. And that has provided an environment that means that you're opening Snapchat very regularly. You're engaging with this close group of friends that really cares about what you're doing. And to be able to bring commerce there makes a lot of sense. Why? Because the people who you're typically shopping with or asking for advice about shopping are your close friends. You know, shopping is a part of people's lives in a very routine way. One third of teen purchases goes to apparel and accessories. And so when you look at all of these parts of Snapchat, this close friends network, this camera first environment, and this big push um, and usage around even maps and location, you see an incredible opportunity for commerce because commerce is at the heart of those three things. It's at the heart of your close friends. It has a huge opportunity within the camera because of what your style is or if you want to try something on. And of course, based on your location and you even being in the physical store, so much more can be unlocked. And so that's why we're really focused on commerce and why it feels such a natural fit into a lot of the kind of philosophies and important product decisions we've made overall on the application. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Carolina. Um, we could keep going, and uh, but we, we're out of time. But that was, yeah, we'll just keep watching and uh, keep back on Amazon.
Awesome. Excited. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks.